Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning as we gather together and celebrate this day and this weekend, this time to remember and give thanks for all of those who have offered their lives as sacrifice in service to care for those in need. And we want to extend a special thank you to their families this morning. I would invite you to share in worship with us this morning, uh, to share in communion. So if you haven't gotten wine or grape juice or bread, please rush out and do that really quickly and then come back as we continue with worship. Uh, also, an announcement that we will be, after we finish worship this morning, we will leave this feed open for an additional 10 minutes. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them for me, and I will do my best to answer them. If you have any questions about our announcements, those that were shared at the beginning or some that I have later on, uh, please don't hesitate to ask those questions, and I will pop in and share with all of you the answers that I can give this morning. Thank you all for sharing in this time as we celebrate and as we bring this Easter season to a close. I invite you to prepare yourselves for worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Just as God's work of creation never ends, so the gifts received in baptism are renewed every day. Let us give thanks together for the life given in baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life for water to bathe in, water to drink, for waters to play in and waters that inspire wonder, for water that gives life to our planet. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of life. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of this place, for waters from our tap, for rain and the Schuylkill River. We give you thanks, O God, for the waters of this place. We give you thanks for your salvation through water, for delivering Noah and his family throughout the flood waters, for leading your people Israel through the sea into freedom, for preserving your prophet Elijah through the time of drought, for guiding your people across the Jordan into a new land, for quenching the Samaritan's woman's thirst with living water. We give you thanks for your salvation through water. We give you thanks for the life of all the baptized and for all who gather here, for the godparents and baptismal sponsors, for children and grandchildren, for our brothers and sisters in Christ across the globe, whom we have never seen, but to whom we are bound. We give you thanks for the life of all the baptized. We give you thanks for life in Christ through your Holy Spirit, for our entry into Jesus' death through these waters, for our new birth into a life of freedom and service, for our calling to be your people, set out from, for the life of the world. We give you thanks, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. As we continue our worship this morning, I'm going to pass you over to Bill as we share in our first song for this morning. All right, good morning, everybody. We are going to sing The Stand. stood you stood before creation eternity in your hand you spoke the earth into motion my soul now to stand you stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame my sin weighed upon your shoulders my soul now to stand so what can I say and what can I do But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. 
So I'll walk upon salvation Your spirit alive in me My life to declare your promise My soul now to stand So what can I say? So what can I say? What can I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. So what can I say? And what can I do? But offer this heart, oh God. Once again, Bill, for being here and for sharing your wonderful ministry with us this morning. It is always a joy to have music as we worship together. Let us continue as we profess with the apostolic greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of glory. Your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading for today is from Acts, the first chapter. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, He was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards the heavens? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Here ends our readings for this morning. Let us pray. 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength, our Savior, and our ascended Redeemer. Amen. We hear multiple times in our readings for this morning this notion of glory, of what it means of the promise of hope. But when we hear that, when we hear that word glory, we often want it to refer to our own glory, our own personal understanding, our own expectation. Yet what we hear in this passage about God's glory is something completely different. Jesus goes to the cross to demonstrate God's glory. Jesus is put to death for God's glory glory. Jesus utters rejected by the authorities of the time. And in his death, in his mortality, in his weakness, he shows the absolute necessity for God's intervention in our world. But more so, he shows God's ability and willingness to intervene in that world, that hope for a new future. It is God in Jesus who enters into our own mortal and vulnerable condition. It is this God who we profess, who endures unjust suffering and unbearable loss, who sacrifices, who offers hope and seeks to go beyond the understanding of human weakness to show just how divine God is. God embraces our weakness through love, through hope, through promise, through what is to come, even through the here and now. God seeks newness. In the midst of all of this, in the midst of this extended weekend that we have that signifies the beginning of summer, it also signifies the remembrance of those who offered themselves up as a sacrifice, willing to go into harm's way, to protect, to offer hope, to defend a promise. That promise is our nation, a combined unity of a group of people from various walks of life, from various backgrounds, who sought to come together in newness, much like our community of faith. While we gather in various locations, while we gather near and far, while we gather in the midst of all of this turmoil and uncertainty, we still gather to hear God's promise, to hear God's hope for our own understanding and for the joy of what is to come. And I think so often we examine this passage and we see ourselves like those disciples who watched Jesus go up into the heaven with mouths open and just waited. It took another to come into their midst and say, this isn't the end. This is not where the story ends. This is only the beginning of the next chapter, and that chapter includes you. That chapter includes you. Me. Those that were with the disciples promised that Jesus would come again. And while we wait, we don't just stand around. 
We engage the world in need. We engage the world to reach out, to care for those who are hungry, to uplift the broken, to seek out injustice, and to stand firm in our faith. Pray. That's what we hear at the end of this passage. Those disciples and those women, all of those who were gathered together in that place, devoted themselves to one another, devoted themselves to prayer. As I was studying this week, I came across this writing from a Jewish scholar, Bible scholar named Abraham Heschel. He wrote, To pray is to take notice of the wonder, to regain the sense of the mystery that animates all beings, the divine margin in all attainments. Prayer is our humble answer to the inconceivable surprise of living. It is all we can offer in return for the mystery by which we live. Who is worthy to be present at the constant unfolding of time? Amidst the meditation of the mountains, the humility of flowers, wiser than all alphabets, clouds that die constantly for the sake of beauty, we are hating, hunting, hurting. He concludes, it is gratefulness that makes us great. However, we often lack the strength to be grateful courage to answer, the ability to pray. Later, he wrote, prayer clarifies our hopes and our intentions. It helps us discover our true aspirations, the pangs that we ignore, the longing we forget. It is an act of self-purification, a quarantine for the soul. <laughs> That's what struck me. Quarantine the soul. So in the midst of a quarantine that can feel like it's soul sucking, the answer to our souls from this suffering is gathering together in prayer. To listen, to listen for the Holy Spirit in our midst, to listen for God's calling in our lives here now, in this time, as we wait, as we celebrate next Sunday, the coming of the Holy Spirit, the beginning of the Advocate on earth that continues through you, through me. Unity with one another and with God. Connecting with each other, caught up in the life that God offers us. Our life, your life, is important to God. Our lives are important to each other. Unity, even though we are not physically together, we are connected. Using technology, using all different avenues to bring us together even in this time when we struggle to be physically apart. Prayer also brings us together as we pray for those who are struggling, as we pray for those who are celebrating, as we pray for those who are just getting through. We hear God's promise, God's hope, that is central for our world. So the truth about this passage is God is present here in this empty building because you are with us. You are with us in prayer. This same God who is with us in every season, who witnesses to all of the joys and all of the tragedies in our lives, who was revealed at the margins to be with the, those who are suffering and to be there with those who are experiencing joy and blessing. Christ is in you. 
through the Spirit's power, you are Christ's bearer, God's bearer to the world. And this aching, pandemic-stricken world needs you. It needs you to share Christ, to share God's love, to share God's promise, to advocate for justice and mercy and peace in our communities, in our state, in our nation, and in the world. So, as we end this Easter season, and as we prepare with joy to shout for what is coming for the Holy Spirit interacting with us again and again. We are called to tell the world what God is doing, that Jesus is alive and working in and through us. This is our call and this is our gift. This is our promise for God to say, show, show them. Show those you encounter, show the world around you, show the promise of God's glory, of God's hope, wherever you are. Amen. I will pass you all back over to Bill for this morning, for our next song. All right, hello again. So now is the time. If you have that red book, that red hymnal at home, and I know some of you do, uh, now is the time to go get it and turn to number 581. We are going to sing You Are Mine. If you're on a computer, you could also just open a new tab and Google ELW581, and it should be one of the first results. So, You Are Mine. <laughs> I will come to you in the silence I will lift you from all your fear You will hear my voice I claim you as my choice Be still and know I am here I am hope for all who are hopeless I am eyes for all who long to see in the shadows of the night I will be your light come and rest in me do not be afraid I am with you I have called you each by name Come and follow me I will bring you home I love you and you are mine Third verse I am strength for all the despairing Healing for the ones who dwell in shame All the blind will see The lame will all run free And all will know my name Do not be afraid, I am with you I have called you each by name come and follow me I will bring you home I love you and you are mine fourth verse I am the word that leads all to freedom. I am the peace the world cannot give. I will call your name, embracing all your pain, 
Stand up now, walk and live. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to confess your faith with me as we profess that faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Join me as we pray this morning. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. O oh God, Call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians, whose skills enrich our understanding, like Nicholas Copernicus and Leonard Euler, whom the church commemorates today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable, especially those nations currently in crisis from natural disasters, those in our own nation who are suffering, those who are on the front lines, those essential workers, those in the in a police force, fire departments, EMS, hospitals, those in nursing homes, those in grocery stores, gas stations, all of those people who are deemed essential. Uplift, keep them safe. Redirect those who use violence and greed as weapons. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to the aid of your children, O God. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage to all who embark on new ventures. 
We especially remember this day those who risked their lives to serve in our armed forces. Grant safety to those serving at home or abroad and assure them of your never-failing strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for those who are struggling with pain unseen, with mental anguish, with suicidal thoughts, those in unhealthy relationships, those who feel trapped. We lift up these tough issues to break the silence and to reach out to those in need, that they may know they are never alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Raise all your saints to eternal life, until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we pray for all for whom we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to share a gracious peace with one another. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace as we are gathered here this morning. Peace be with you. As we share that peace with one another and continue with our worship, I invite you, as you are able, to share your gifts with the church. There is a link above uh, at the beginning to share electronic gifts. You can also, if you would rather, write a check and mail it to the church as we continue to, to share and to do amazing work here, even though we are not able to gather for worship on Sunday morning. Uh, it is a joy to see as I walked in this morning, and I meant to take a picture of it to show you. I will try to take one and post it quickly uh, before we close out. The power packs that we are putting together, uh, Healthy Harvest will be here again this week to share and to be uplifted. And so we have, I think it's close to 50 or 60 packs put together to hand out to anyone who shows up uh, on Wednesday afternoon. So I invite you to, to share, to, to be engaged with one another, to have those great conversations as we continue to, to do the ministry and to share God's grace and God's hope and God's glory here in this place in various ways as we continue forward. And I just want to thank all of you who have given and those who continue to give to support the ministry here at AELC and all of the mission work and ministries that we do, not just at this building, but through this building as we move forward. And with that in mind, I would invite you to once again pray with me. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration. But you make of them an abundance just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name. In the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. And the night that Jesus was betrayed in an upper room, he took bread and blessed it. And, as, and said, here is my body broken for you. And he took the cup and he raised it on high and he bowed his head and he prayed. And then he said, my blood for you is shed, a cleansing stream to wash your sins away. Here Jesus offers himself to everyone, the humble and the proud, the joyful and the grieving, the pious and the profane, those who have faith and those who only long for faith. 
to everyone without exception. Gathered together near and far by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are invited and welcome to share in this glorious meal that Jesus offers to all. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. I would invite you now to share communion with those who are gathered with you this morning. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened to us your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to now send you over to Bill for uh, singing together of Aaron's blessing. All right, repeat after me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. And be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance on 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 you. May he keep you in perfect peace. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we finish. Uh, I invite you to do a couple of things. Next Sunday is Pentecost. So what that means is wear, I'm going to pull this so it's easier to see, wear red. Don't forget, red is so important for Pentecost. It is a joy to see. Also, I invite you, we are putting together a Pentecost mosaic. So if you see red in your midst, wherever you are, take a picture of it, send it to me direct message it to me, Facebook message it to me, email it to me if you need it, to text it to me, get it to me or the church somehow so we can put it together. We've already got some really amazing pictures, and it can be anything. It can be a sunset. It can be a bag of coffee that is red, which is a joy for me, and I'm sure probably for my family that I get my daily dose of coffee. 
Uh, so anything like that, anything that you see that is red, that brightens your day, that enlivens you, I invite you to, to share those images with us. And while you are doing that, uh, I would invite you to do a couple of other things. If you are willing, I invite you to share a picture of your worship space. Where are you worshiping now? Feel free to leave it here uh, or post it on the church's Facebook page as a great opportunity to share in this time together. Uh, also, tell us your story. Tell us about worshiping, what it has meant to you that we are able to gather uh, across these lines of communication. So please, I invite you to share that, whether it is in the, the 10 minutes that are continuing after the service ends or whether it is later on or writing something up and you can send it into the church. Uh, continue to share your God sightings. We are seeing and experiencing God here in our midst throughout these difficult times. God is at work and it is a joy to hear some of those stories. And I invite you to, to share that. Next Sunday is Pentecost. It is a great time to invite someone to join with us. Feel free, send them a link. Uh, as you saw in the announcements, we tried it this morning. Apparently, there's a little bit of a glip that uh, they're not getting audio to YouTube, but we're going to work on that this week. So if you know someone who isn't on Facebook and who doesn't have a church home or a faith community, send them the link, uh, invite them to, to share this connection with you. Uh, also, in this time of this pandemic, in this time of being home one of my God sightings is that we have seen growth. We will be welcoming in new members in the next coming weeks uh, to, to share in joy and in this community. And it is so exciting to, to hear and experience their stories and their joy of, of coming to, to Allegheny and what it has meant for them. So I invite you to do that. One last thing, be on the lookout for the Generosity Project. Uh, they will be coming out with something special, I believe, uh, to connect with Healthy Harvest as we continue to share our blessings with others. I think that's it. I think those are the announcements that I have, so I'm going to send you back over to Bill for one final song for this morning. All right, everybody, hope you have a great day. Stay safe, and let's go out today singing, Today is the Day. Casting my cares, I'm casting my cares aside. I'm leaving my past behind. I'm setting my heart and mind on you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, relieving there's so much more. Knowing that all you have in store for me is good. It's good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. about tomorrow I'm trusting in what you say today is the day today is the day put in my fears put in my fears aside I'm leaving my doubts behind I'm giving my hope dreams to you, Jesus. I'm reaching my hands to yours, leaving there's so much more, knowing that all you have in store for me 
is good. It's good. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't worry about tomorrow. Call and response. Repeat after me. I will stand. I will stand upon your truth. I will stand, I will stand upon your truth. All my days, all my days, I live for you. I will stand. I will stand upon your truth. All my days, all my days, I live for you. Today is the day. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm giving you my fears and sorrow. Thank you once again to Bill for your music. It is always a joy and a blessing to have you and all of our musicians with us. Hopefully you were able to listen to Nancy's uh, prelude this morning. If not, please check that out. That was beautiful. So thank you, Nancy, for sharing that. Uh, Kristen, our director of youth and mission, I just saw posted a uh, video from our cat class, cat, cat, eh, cat class kids. So don't forget to check that out. It was really cool, and I believe one of them even put it all together. So thank you all so much. I enjoy this time sharing in worship with you. Uh, and Don't forget, this is going to stay up for 10 minutes, so feel free to spend time here chatting with one another. Uh, we're looking into how Facebook can move us into messengers for various groups if people want to do video chat, so we're working on that as well. But with all of that in mind, remember, you are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Take care. God's peace, everyone.